Welcome to Vote Pro Podcast, the award-winning cannabis news podcast brought to you by VotePropot.com. Here are your hosts, Phil Adams, Jay Breton and Andrew McCready's. Big Pharma could be moving in on the medical marijuana industry. Jay's got some insight on that. Is the end coming for cannabis tourism in Amsterdam? And Jamaica is facing a weed shortage, apparently. Mon. What? That's impossible. Uh, you, you wouldn't think, but uh, we've got that stuff and other stuff. Hello, everybody. Welcome again to Vote Pro Podcast. Uh, we're really glad you're here. What's up, Mr. Phil? What do you say? Well, well, we've got some big stuff happening, man. Yeah, man. I, I mean, uh, especially me, <laughs> spe- especially in in, yeah. in your neck of the woods, and I, I think we can be credited with pretty much all of it. Yeah, yeah. I think we have you know? a lot to no, do. With no. it. I mean, <laughs> no, we had zero really. to do with it. Nobody's heard of us. <laughs> but uh, first, I want to talk about what's going on in the U.S. Senate. Now, this seems to be the top priority for congressional Democrats in the House and the Senate is getting marijuana legalized. They just seem to be focusing on that to the exclusion of all else. And um, as far as we're concerned, we couldn't be happier. Yeah, man, it's Um, unbelievable. What happened on uh, this week was uh, Chuck Schumer convened. Of course, Chuck Schumer is the Senate Majority Leader in the Senate convened a meeting with a bunch of cannabis stakeholders and um, the Senate Finance Committee Chair, uh, Ron Wyden of of Oregon, as well as Senator Cory Booker from New Jersey. And they heard from a group of advocates and stakeholders um, to talk about plans to draft a legalization uh, bill uh, quote, in the early part of this year. Well, we're in the early part of this year. So that sounds like, what, soon, right? Yeah, man. If it weren't for this pesky impeachment stuff, maybe they could get... What impeachment <laughs> stuff is that? I, you know, I, I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it, it, it's uh, whatever. Um, but in any case... Can of worms much? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can open worms everywhere. Um, they, they had a virtual meeting... Representatives, they discussed for maybe an hour or so, um, included some folks from Normal, uh, the Drug Policy Alliance, a group I hadn't heard of, Students for Sensible Drug Policy. Mm, Yeah, that's been around a while. Has it? And organizations, you know, affiliated with the industry and with advocacy, and also some business folks, the National Cannabis Industry Association and the Minority Cannabis Business Association, they were also there. Mm -hmm. Wow. So they talked about ways to restructure regulatory uh, and and statutory uh, rules, uh, tax policy, social equity. Um, They didn't go into too much debt. But um, and and as far as the the details from the proposals, but they they did signal that they want to incorporate feedback from these organizations and and other organizations. And um, one of the commitments from the start, and this is according to the people who are in attendance, is that the the Senate bill will at a very minimum deschedule cannabis and regulate it. Right. With a. You know, justice and uh, equity approached mm-hmm. uh, approach. So this is happening, man. This is this is something that's going on, and uh, it, it it seems like they're in a race to do this. Why? Why do you think that is? There's so many other things on the plate, and this is the one that's forefront. Why? I wonder. Well, I think one reason may be that there. It's kind of low-hanging fruit. This is something that they feel they can knock out. Without too much of a fight? Or? Without too much of a fight. They've got their, their uh, you know, ducks in a row. Um, you know, assuming Joe Biden doesn't put up a stink about it. And I don't think he will. No, I don't think he um, will. But, uh, you know, he's he is not has not been on board with legalization up to now. And his picks... 
um, for various, like he he just uh, nominated a woman for to head up the Small Business Administration. Right. A, a, a woman named uh, Isabel Guzman, and she didn't give any any promises uh, to a Senate committee that that she would ensure or that the SBA would ensure equal treatment for cannabis businesses. Now, you may not have heard about this, but current policy at the Small Business Administration excludes legally operating cannabis companies from the same access to programs and resources that virtually every other industry uh, has, is, is, has available to them, yep. such Very- as loans, Mm-hmm. Uh, COVID and uh, disaster relief, counseling, mentoring, that sort of thing. And um, so Biden doesn't seem all too keen on, yeah. on nominating people who are going to sail this through. But, you know, if if the, the Senate and House get together and send a bill to his desk, I, I don't see why he wouldn't sign it. Well, but I don't understand our press these days. Well, who does? But... I mean, this is such a huge issue. I mean, to me, this is huge. You know, the Senate talking about passing, uh, finalizing a bill to legalize cannabis, and not a single reporter has asked the president that I'm aware of, is this a bill you would sign? That's unbelievable to me. I, 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 don't, I haven't I heard it either. I can't fathom it. You know, why would that not be one of the first questions you would ask this week when all this came out? It, you know, it's more like, uh, hey, how do you pick your ties? And, uh, you know, yeah. Wow. What kind of What's ice cream do you like? ice cream? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it is what yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, well, well, it's big news. You know, man. we, we could we could spend the next hour talking about what's happened to the free press yeah. in America, but right. uh, we won't. Nope. So, it's not you know, our job. But, but let's let's take the good news uh, when we yeah. get it. And, awesome. and this is as decidedly good news. And um, and way to go, Schumer. You know, for for putting it front and center. You know, props to you, Bo. I appreciate. Yeah, we appreciate sure. it. Yeah, we at Vote Pro Pot salute you. Send us your thoughts at votepropot.com slash contact, or send us an email at podcast at votepropot.com, and please give us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts. If you'd like to be part of the show, call our message line at two four zero two five seven two four four one. So, Phil, didn't you go to Jamaica last year? I think I did. did it you? was yeah. a great trip. Yeah, man. Well, you know, there's an article here in the AP had on the online yesterday. Jamaica faces a marijuana shortage as what? farmers struggle. So apparently there's been some extremely heavy rain, uh, ex- which was uh, followed by extended drought. And on top of all that, you got all this COVID shit. So the, the, the government set up all these rules and regulations and um, you can't tend your crops after there's a 6 p.m. curfew. So all kinds of stuff like that. What's happened is there, there's just an extreme shortage. And of course, what's the number one industry in Jamaica? I would say tourism. Absolutely. So what's happened is these tourists, all these tourists are putting online, don't go to Jamaica. There's no weed. That's why we go to Jamaica. So apparently it's really having well, an impact. Well, that's not why I went to Jamaica. <laughs> well, There's so much on, great stuff honest. to go to Jamaica for. <laughs> absolutely. It was absolutely. a great trip. But it's a beautiful place. I did it's a get, beautiful place. There was plenty of weed when I was there. <laughs> and well, it was good a- weed. Activists say they believe the pandemic and a loosening of Jamaica's marijuana laws has led to an increase in local consumption that has contributed to the scarcity, even if the ah. pandemic has put a dent in the arrival of ganja-seeking tourists. Tourists, too, have taken note, placing posts on travel websites, as I just, as I just said, discussing the difficulty they're having finding the weed. Now, the government uh, cannabis licensing authority in Jamaica has authorized 29 cultivators, and they've issued 73 licenses for transportation, retail processing, and other activities. And uh, they say, and this is a tr- the most interesting part of the article to me, the government says, there's no shortage here. We're fine. Well, there isn't, but nobody buys from them, apparently. So it, it uh, said that um, the farmers- why, act- why are they not buying uh, government-sanctioned well, wheat? Well, for the main reason, it costs ten to- five to 10 times as much as going up to that guy. You know, you've been there, the guy comes down yeah. the beach and opens his uh, vest up right. and- 
Tells you all the different products. So he's it's got. California all over again. It's, it is. It's the uh, yeah. It costs too much. Um, there's uh, all kinds of legal regulations and right. you know few dispensaries and uh, you know so forth. So if you're planning a trip to Jamaica to smoke weed, you might want to rethink or bring your own. Go bring your own. Can you do that? Mm, I don't know. It's kind of risky. Well, traveling. I mean, with the with the federal ban. Traveling is still dicey, yeah. But it can be done, yeah. Um, but I don't recommend anyone uh, violate any law. So mm-hmm. you know that's not what we're here for. Nope. Um, but um, you know, th- as good as the the weed was in my experience in Jamaica, uh-huh. um, it's, it's not. I mean, you'd do better to bring your own because <laughs> the 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 weed you get from a dispensary here, and in, in, at least in Maryland. It's top drawer, man. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's good stuff. way ahead. Yeah. And uh, not as, ex- well, I mean, it's probably cheaper in Jamaica still, but it's it's uh, yeah, it's not as good. But don't you have a story about Amsterdam, speaking of traveling? Well, see, that's the thing. Amsterdam, for many years, has been kind of a tourist mecca for weed. And and right, uh, the reason right. is, now, now first, you, you have to understand that Marijuana is still illegal in it's Amsterdam. It's very complicated in Amsterdam. It's complicated. Yeah. It's like you can buy it in like coffee shops and stuff. Right. Buy a um, joint. If, if, if you're not sure how it works, you, you need to watch the, the opening sequence of uh, Pulp Fiction. That's right. Uh, because because Vincent Vega explains the whole thing. Yeah, you know? that's right. It, it, it's like, it's legal, but it's not like 100% legal, you know? And, <laughs> yeah. uh, right, and that's true. We've done some stories on it. But what they said is they have a tolerance policy. The coffee shops can sell the weed, and you can have up to a, a f- some fraction of an ounce, like mm-hmm. an eighth of an ounce or something like that, and they're not going to do anything for you. Uh-huh. According to the government research, some 58% of international tourists, and it's a very international city, as yeah, you know, absolutely. that arrive in Amsterdam. And, and of course, this is, a, this is an article from um, our friends at Cannabis.net. And 58%... Kurt Dalton. Kurt Dalton. And 58% of the tourists that arrive in Amsterdam are there, basically, to consume cannabis. Oh, Really? Because my daughter no. was there last year, and she didn't mention that part to me. <laughs> well, she she may not be aware of the statistic, well, but supposedly uh, for educational purposes. Now, the study showed that the city would only support fewer than seventy coffee shops if they were to only serve the locals. So, oh wow! But 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 the proposal by that's what the proposal is by Amsterdam's mayor, a woman named Femke Halsema. Um, she has recommended a new law that would prohibit tourists from being able to access any of their shops. And there's like 150, 160 of them. That's crazy. And, um, and and it's not apparently that she has a problem with tourists getting high. It's really that she says, you know, quote, Amsterdam is an international city and we wish to attract tourists but for its richness, its beauty, and its cultural institutions. Apparently, she she uh, she just wants to redirect their interest oh, to, you know, the tulips or whatever. <laughs> you know, and... and what do you uh, care, lady? You know? You know, but, and, and I, I would... And, I, and just like Jamaica, there's so many other things to visit Amsterdam for, right. but, but why take that away? Right. And it's all it's going to do is, I would think, reduce the, the amount of tourism. I mean, some people go there because they want to check that part out, right? During the, the whole COVID thing, it is still not really open for tourism anyway. Right. But, True. you know, when they when they do reopen, that's... Uh, now, this is just a, a, a proposal, a, a recommendation by the mayor. So it's not... It's not law yet. It's not a law yet. and, mm. and but But she wants to get away from... She says the idea is to get away from visitors that have only one focus, coming through the red light district, getting stoned or drunk, and causing a nuisance. No. And and it has led to some crime. Um, well, then maybe there's some legitimacy there if there's there's a crime right. problem. But anyway, so um, check that one off my list for Amsterdam may not be the uh, the weed tourist attraction it used that to it be. once was or Jamaica. So that's that's or our Jamaica. travel report for the day. Yeah. <laughs> 
You want to hear some business news? Well, I always want to hear some business. You're, you're, you're kind of our business guru these days. Well, yeah. Uh, Deborah Borchardt, your friend. She uh, shares the stage news. with you and Jimmy mm-hmm. and Kurt, uh, Jimmy Young and Kurt Dalton, when you guys do the We Talk News. We Talk News. Uh, and she she has the Green Market Report, which is a really good website. If uh, she covers all the financial industry stuff for for, the, so she's got an article here that uh, I find pretty interesting. It's the first time that a large pharmaceutical company has acquired, and this is a a, a sort of standard pharmaceutical company that makes drugs, n- neurological f- diseases, and so forth. They are acquiring GW Pharmaceutical which is um, a, l- a large cannabis-based pharmaceutical company. They're the ones that came okay. out with the Epidiolex. They do, they're they doing a lot oh, of research yeah. with cannabis. Uh, and for th- the purchase was a total of $7.2 billion. So this is a, this is a big one now. Wow. Uh, now, what, what, makes this, what makes this worth covering on the show here is I I've, I've saw a bunch of online speculation by people saying, you know, oh, this is the beginning of the end. You know, the far, big pharma is coming in and taking over and so on and so forth. So, you know, the, the point, I, I see it the other way. I see it as legitimizing, you know, cannabis as a real medicine. I mean, this is a humongous company, Jazz Pharmaceutical. I agree. And they're coming in and saying this is worth our $7.2 billion because right. the research in the last several years is pointing in the direction of this is a medicine, you know, I mean. And, you know, I don't see – you can say, give me an idea how you feel about it, but I don't see this being any kind of impediment to your standard cannabis industry, other stuff, you know, smoking well, flour. And so, I'm thinking about it this way, and I thought about this, aspirin. Okay, aspirin is made from bushes and trees or something. Bark. I don't know what the hell aspirin's made. Right. right. It, it, but my point is people don't go out and, and – Cut down the bush and bark and the beans that it, that they take this uh, <laughs> salicylic acid from that they make asthma. You know, they go buy a pill. And, and right. what the pharmaceutical company brings to this is, in my opinion, is, you know, the research. And, and then they can extract compounds accurately and, 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 you know, provide appropriate dosings. That's the only way that the medical, the medical industry doctors are going to prescribe this. That's right. And and I think you, you hit upon two very important uh, keys here. Dosing, that, you know, it you just is can't just dose too smoking. hard yeah. to, you, you can't smoke or vape a, 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 an exact dose. Right. And um, when you mention Epidiolex, that is a, a, basically a CBD product. Right. And um, with no psychoactive right. effects. Right. So, you know, there are people who could benefit from medical cannabis who have no interest in getting high sure you know sure if they and, can... and if you can dose it properly and and give them the benefits of this substance without that that sounds like a great domain for the pharmaceutical industry right. to get into now there's all kinds of holistic uh you know medical applications you know that people can and that's uh, are, are happy yeah. to do themselves, and that's not going to go away. And that's not something pharmaceutical companies are interested in. Nah. Obviously, they're interested nah. in research, discovering compounds, what they can do, and then extracting them, and like I said, dosing them. So right, and you know, making money doing it. Right. So some of the details of this: Jazz Pharmaceutical is a global biopharmacal biopharm, yeah, company headquartered in Dublin, Ireland. The firm's portfolio of medicines and products uh, covers a concentration of neuroscience, such as sleep and movement disorders, as well as oncology, including hematologic malignancies and solid tumors. So this is a serious company, Jazz. Serious company, Um, right. They serve patients in uh, more than 90 countries, and they have a market cap of approximately $9 billion. So they're a big company. And GW is a large manufacturer and marketer of new regulatory-approved therapeutics that that come from cannabis, cannabidiol. You know? Yeah. I I just kind of musing here that you know they've been trying to find a cure for cancer for as long as we can remember right right and they're making great progress and finding and you know Treating cancer anyway, is just yeah. not the death sentence that it once was Absolutely. quite the same way 
But wouldn't it be just a kick in the pants <laughs> yeah, if they be. found a cure and it was weed-based cure? <laughs> wouldn't that be great? Yeah. That, <laughs> All <and> these it, <laughs> years, they've had it right there, and they just don't want to do it. Well, so let us know what you think. If, if you think this is a damaging to the cannabis industry, having Big Pharma come in and, 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 and get involved, uh, let us know. And uh, I personally don't see it being an issue. I think it's... It, it, nah. I'm Globally, I think it's a good thing because it's not going to affect. And, and here's one more point: if we we're going to have adult use recreational pretty soon, I mean, it's going to happen. It, it it's it looks like it's happening. And, and and these big pharmaceuticals know that, and they are right. still interested. And why are they interested? Because this is a separate industry creating new drugs, new right. pharmaceuticals that do specific things. You know, like you just right. said, maybe cannabis derived drugs. If you have prostate cancer, maybe there's a drug f- made from the compounds in cannabis that treat it. You know, that's that, right. That's not something you're going to be able to do by going out and smoking a joint. Right. We have a couple of state updates. Hit me. One one is very good and one is not so very good. Um, let's start with the very good. Uh, it wasn't more than a couple of weeks ago, Jay, that you and I were kind of kicking around the idea. Wouldn't it be funny? <laughs> because Maryland, we've been enjoying medical marijuana for years now. And um, and it just finally hit Virginia. Barely. You know, and, and, and we're like, God, when, did, when are these Virginia people going to get, get on board with together. this? Well, <laughs> Virginia is getting ready to lap us. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. it was only it was less than a month ago that Governor Northam, the governor of Virginia, sent a proposal to the General Assembly for legalization. Since then, it has gone through debate. It has passed all of the key committees in the House of Delegates and the Virginia Senate. And it just this week was approved on a floor vote in each of the two houses. Literally yesterday. Yesterday. As right. as we record uh, on on Saturday, it happened on Friday. The 5th. The 5th. And, um, of course, the, there's only two steps left for this. Yeah. They have to reconcile the, the bill from the Senate and the House of Delegates. Which they say is going to be a piece of cake. They're piece so close. Piece of cake because yeah. they're very close. Yeah. And then it's got to go to the governor's desk for a signature. Well, it's his proposal. <laughs> it's his proposal. He, I think I'll probably sign it. Slam freaking dunk. Yeah. So so this is not just something that we're joking about. Damn. Virginia is 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 uh, kicking Maryland's I ass. I sh- should have placed a bet with you, my friend. <laughs> Damn it. I would have taken it. Speaking, of bets, it. speaking <laughs> of bets in Virginia, sidetrack, we have legal uh, sports betting now. Did you yeah. know that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I just downloaded FanDuel and I'm trying to figure out where to spend my money, where to lose my money. Yeah. Well, see, that's something that I don't do. <laughs> I've never I don't been a gambler. do sport. I yeah. don't. Well, I do gamble from time to time, but just I don't call it gambling. I call it gaming. That's you know? better you're because you're lose. Gambling <laughs> is when you go and you're trying to make money. Gaming is when you take some money to a casino have fun with. and point. have fun with it. And that's me. I, I'm not that's I, I'm I'm interested in gaming, but I only like to to wager on things that I have some hand in the outcome. Right. That makes sense. I have sense. no hand in the yeah. outcome of the Super Bowl. Now I'll do a Super Bowl, you know, pool where yeah. you buy a square. Right. And, yeah, and I've been known to do the brackets, although I stopped doing the NCAA brackets years ago. But uh, we digress. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, a little <laughs> off the track there. But, but um, no, it's exciting, Virginia, man. I mean, it's... Uh, and people who don't live here may not know, we have a medical program now that came yep. on board very quickly, but there's no flower. So it's a medical program where you get, I've mentioned this here before, so tinctures. Well, there's be flower pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, vape pens. And it's a medical program, but it's, it's being well run, I must say. And yep. this would just be high gear, bro. Going from that, or we don't even have flour. Right. Now, my Zero question, to 60. My question is, I wonder how quickly they could get the regulations in line and get this online. If they do pass adult use, recreational, I mean, is it going to take five years to get it up and running? Or, you know, that that's still I don't to be think seen. so, because here's the other thing that's part of this bill. It, it allows uh, adults 21 or older to possess um, and purchase up to an ounce, I think. Okay. 
you're also allowed to grow up right. to four plants. Which is awesome. Which uh, two of them can be mature plants. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, you know, and, and we, we talked about that. Andrew brought this up a few weeks ago. Is is it legal? Is it really legal if you can't grow it? Well, I, I, I kind of agree with Andrew that it's kind of mm -hmm. not. Actually, that was a story I did. It was a story that I think Kurt had on his website. Yeah. Is it? And it was an editorial. And I agree with you. Is it really legal? It's a plant. It's is a it plant. legal so, if the government completely controls everything about so it? So if you can grow it and if you can possess it, um, then then who is the where where is the state's role in this other than to regulate you know purity and safety and and you know the same kind of and taxing right. it and stuff like that keeping it away from kids yeah keeping yeah. it away from kids um, other than that. Yeah, what's the point of having the government's nose in it? I, well, None. Except None. for cash. Right. <laughs> so that's that's what's going on in Virginia. That's the good news. Now, what's wow. the bad news? The bad news is this doofus, a guy, <laughs> this uh, <laughs> Idaho. What do you think of when you think of Idaho? Potatoes. Potatoes. I think of Napoleon Dynamite. Freaking idiot. And and I think of Jack. No, that, that's Wyoming, Jackson Hole. Where's, Jackson. The, where's the big ski resort in Idaho? It is a uh, don't ask big me. one. Anyway, but but we talked months ago, maybe a year or more ago, about our downloads and how we had one state where we never we do now, but we had no downloads from Idaho. Remember that? No, it was South Dakota. It was. Oh, okay. it was South Dakota. All right. So well, scratch that whole thing. All right, forget that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Idaho. But we had very few from the, Idaho. Uh, Idaho Senate passed a bill that would ban cannabis legalization efforts. So in other words, what? it's essentially a uh, constitutional amendment as I understand it. The Idaho Senate, and this is uh, from T.G. Brantfault. This is on Gondrepreneur, but it's all over the web. Um, the Idaho Senate approved a measure to constitutionally ban any statewide legalization of non-pharmaceutical psychoactive drugs, which would include cannabis. The proposal still has to pass the House in a two-thirds vote and would then uh, move to the voters via a ballot initiative next year. So this one guy, this it's a spearheaded this, supported it, and advanced it is the Senator C. Scott Grow is his last name. Senator C. Scott Grow, G R O W. Okay. He's a senator in the in Idaho. Okay. Yeah. So if it, I mean the funny thing is Idaho is you know if you if you look at Idaho it's bordered by all these states that have that are legal right Washington right. Oregon Oregon Montana yep. uh, and, and those all have adult use right and then you've got Wyoming and Utah right. which have which have medical programs so Idaho sits right in the middle of all that and you've got this one guy who wants to keep it that way. You know, it's just. I mean, but I mean, you made a great point. Well, make your point again. Well, I, before I, the show. I just think that you know, if this is what the voters of Idaho want, they elected these guys, right? And um, if if and if it stands up in the in the voter in, in the ballot initiative. That so would just indicate that the voters of Idaho don't want marijuana legalized. And that's well, their, if that's what that's, they want, that's, that's right. what they get. It's their, it's their prerogative. They're the voters. They get to decide. I don't have to like it. Right. Well, you don't have to live, live there. in I, I don't have to live there. And, <laughs> and, and, and neither do any of the voters who do live there if they don't like it. If they don't want to live there, they can move. Right. You know, vote with your feet. But this is federalism. Like it that's or not. That's right. And and I support federalism. I support. I I disagree with their with their ban, Democratic but I support Republic. their right to ban that's, it. Right? That's right. Exactly. Earlier this month, and what brought all this on is uh, the House lawmakers from both sides of the aisle announced a plan to legalize medical cannabis in the state. And so that's in they they've been working on a uh, on, on a ballot initiative and getting right. signatures and so forth. Idaho's been working on that for a while now, and then hemp is is still illegal. In Idaho, one of the few states where they, yep. the, the lawmakers blocked a bill to legalize it this year, earlier this year. So, right. you know, I, I would say this. If you live in Idaho and you're listening to us here, you need to reach out, man. Reach out to your 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 local legislators. Get in touch with with uh, Scott Grow and anyone else in your jurisdiction and let them know that, you know, how you feel. I think that's a great idea. Now, I, and and. uh you know, this is part of the pushback that that we, especially Andrew, predicted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That that there are just some folks who are intransigent and they will not 
they will do whatever they can to stand in the way. Mm-hmm. You know, going back to Virginia, there's a, a senator there named uh, Amanda Chase. Right. And she tweeted uh, after Virginia legislator approved the measures. Um, she said, we have a drug problem in Virginia and legalizing marijuana will only lead to more marijuana overdoses and deaths. <laughs> now, that right there tells you the level of ignorance of of. Yeah, the, of ignorance that some people are still operating on. Right. Uh, they're, they're just wrong. You know, they're, they're, you can't overdose and die from marijuana. It's never happened. You know how many people have done it? I've Zero. tried. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. You, know, uh, you know, as Andrew likes to joke, uh, you know, the only way you can die from too much weed is if a bale of it falls on you. <laughs> That's Willie Nelson. <laughs> Okay, so um, there is still a level of uh, misinformation, disinformation that that is kind of ruling the minds of these folks who are just intransigent. And uh, but again, if if the, if they are the elected officials and they are representing the people of Idaho as ostensibly they are, then that's what Idaho yes. should do. So, there it is. Vote for Pedro. Vote for Pedro. Vote for Pedro. Vote for Pedro. Give us your thoughts. Check us out online. Go to votepropot.com. Contact us. Go on Apple Podcasts. Give us a five-star rating. We would love that. Uh, but we really want to hear your thoughts, your opinions, and you know anything that you can add to this conversation. And we will be glad to share that with uh, the rest of you listeners. What else, Jay? Send us an email. Send it to podcast at votepropot.com. Let us know how you feel about subjects we cover. Give us ideas for new subjects to cover, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Right? I would, and uh, call our call our message line. Yeah, our message line is two four zero two five seven two four four one. We don't get a lot of calls from that anymore. We were getting them for a while, but but calls will put you on the show. Yeah, you man. know how cool would that be? Right? To actually be on Vote Pro Podcast. Come on. <laughs> It's a thrill for me. I know that every week, (laughs) every freaking week. (laughs) By the way, there's a lot more information that you can consume via Vote Pro Pot. Just check us out on our social media. Go to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and just do a search for Vote Pro Pot.